All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is turn 22 in honor, and to be honest, I'm starting to get a little bit frustrated because of this. Um, this happens in Dominions. You just have to get used to it. Sometimes luck is not on your side, and in my case, there are no magic sites here, but none was found, but none was found. Um, my total per turn gem income right now is nine. Which is bad for turn 22. For I, I should have a lot more gem income than that. I mean, like, for example, in my other game that I'm playing on YouTube at the moment. The Machaka game. Turn 40-something, so 20 turns ahead from now. My gem income in that game is... I'm sorry, turn 50-something. About 30 turns ahead. 30 turns ahead or so. But still, my gem income in that game is over 100. Um, by turn 22, I should have, I would hope to have a gem income of like, I don't know, 20 or 30 at least. Um, and it's 9. Now, it's about to jump up because I'm going to take the House of Ju Fiery Justice or the House of Just Fires. The game cannot make up its mind which one it's called. Um, the descriptions all call it the House of Just Fires, but the site itself is actually named the House of Fiery Justice. In any case, I'm going to take it. That will give me five more gems per turn. However, they will mostly be fire gems. So my fire gem income will increase yet again. Nothing else really will. Um, I'm dedicating tyrants in a serious way to moving around and sight searching. Fire, earth, and death. I need earth, I need death. I don't have many of them. I also need air. I don't really need much water. Some water would be useful, but I need air. I have several air sages moving around, sight searching, and so far they have gotten me a grand total of zip, zilch, and nothing. Which is honestly quite frustrating. But, uh, c'est la vie, c'est la guerre. So, uh, I am... Merignon has not quite been breached yet. It says it's critically damaged, but a little more time is required, so hopefully next turn. I took back Jimpmark. Um, the battle was very simple. I only lost a few helots. Pronos stomped over everything. Uh, we are going to have to go and besiege this castle, I think. We told Ulm he could have it, but to be honest, Ulm is kind of getting screwed over down here. Like, over and over and over and over. Um, I don't know if this is somebody casting spells, and at the moment, I'm starting to think so. I don't know what spells they are, but literally every one of the last, like, three turns or four turns, Ulm has had independence besieging their capital. And they keep clearing them off, and they keep getting re-besieged, which means Ulm is not being able to recruit mages from their capital, which means they're screwed. Ulm is, like, dead. De Ulm is, like, the bad kind of dead. Um, so there's that. Uh, Merignon is about to... I'm, I'm about to take Marignan's capital. TC and I are going to be sort of, you know, we're non-aggression packed. We're going to be working together. Uh, oh, that reminds me. I need to send him uh, some fire gems because I agreed to do that in exchange for a sword. Uh, that's way more than a sword of the five elements costs to make, but I have excess fire gems and I'm happy to be friends and... I can't make the item at all, so fine. I'll send him 10 fire gems. It won't be a big loss from my perspective. Um, I, yeah. Yeah, probably. Uh, from a strategic standpoint, attacking Ulm would be bad. Geographically speaking. Uh, from a strategic standpoint, as in who's the easiest target, Attacking Ulm would be great. Ulm is by far the easiest target right now. Their god is not terribly dangerous. He is a Lenormer, so has that going for him. But overall, magically speaking, not terribly, terribly dangerous. And they haven't been able to recruit mages from here for a long time. And they're relatively small, I believe. So yeah, that would be the target to go for. Except I, I don't want to spread myself out around this lake. Especially not while Agartha is about to own most of the lake. So, uh, I've made peace with TC. That gives me a bit of a flank. Pythium and I are still on terms. We're not threatening each other. Um, Pythium is trying to move into the oceans. We'll see how that goes. 
Solaria got whomped at Green Coast. Um, they had a nice little battle there. He tried to do what I had advised him to do, which was to spam dust to dust, which is good advice. Unfortunately, there's just too many undead. So Ermor had, they have an Archbishop of Eldergate behind there. Up here, they have their sacreds, uh, Knights of the Unholy Sepulchre and their Lictors, and Lictors are very, very tough and very, very dangerous. Knights of the Unholy Sepulchre are not tough, but are very, very dangerous. And then they have a whole bunch of just bone chaff and two censors, which are commander versions of lictors that can be thugged. Solaria had nothing defending. Practically nothing. Some infantry and four thaumaturgs. Now, thaumaturgs can cast dust to dust, and it's a good spell, and they did in fact cast it, but... So the knights zipped in, got into the infantry, started fighting them. Um started cutting them down. Dust to dust and Decree of the Underworld getting cast, but they just got wiped out very quickly. Um, and then the knights ran back and took care of the last of the province defense. So, here's the thing. Those Thaumaturgs did work. They got, they got kills. They killed things. They killed a knight, I think. They also killed several lictors, which is really, really valuable. But there were only four Thaumaturgs, and dust to dust only ever hits one square at a time. So they just got overwhelmed. They just didn't have enough. And that being so, um, I think Solaria is probably pretty much gone at this point. I mean, there's an army here that just took out the Facian AI force that was invading. But it's just Hastati. And Hastati, while they're fine troops, they're basically Gila warriors, but better. Uh, you know, better protection, better stats, much better defense, uh, better damage, same javelins, higher resource cost. But, I mean, they're decent troops. They're just not going to stop 200 undead, led by 30 sacred sacreds. Uh, in order to do that, you need a fat stack of Thaumaturgs. Um, if he hadn't lost a whole bunch of Thaumaturgs down here earlier, before he knew about Dust to Dust, he might have been able to do some work, because if you have, like, 15 Thaumaturgs spamming Dust to Dust, and they all get 6 or 7 kills, that's all the Sacreds plus a significant chunk of the free spawn just dead. And at that point, things start to look better. Um, this infantry would just get mopped up for practically no casualties if it went in. So... It's a problem, especially because this fort will now be spawning free spawn for Ermor. Uh, Agartha is going to go in against Ermor soon, they've said, so hopefully that will happen. Uh, Vanheim is, I think, still struggling, but still going. They're fighting Ermor, which is great. Gonna leave them alone. I'm thinking that, yeah, um, Shinuyama is probably where I'm going. I'm gonna be over here consolidate that, try to move up here into Nazca territory, and then as soon as Ermor is dealt with, if not before, I'm gonna have to go in against Shinoyama. Um, the other option is Pythium. In a way, strategically, going up against Pythium would be easier because I already have quite a few slaves in each, uh, shackled mages rather, in each of my fortresses over here. I have six in this fortress, I have six in this fortress. So, a couple more turns and I could put together a pretty serious communion. Um, unfortunately, they're mostly fire and water randoms. I do have a few earth randoms, but the fire and water randoms are going to be a little bit problematic because they'll take a whole bunch of extra fatigue. I would like to have a whole bunch of air randoms because with air random uh, slaves, I can put together a Thunderstrike communion. But some of my air randoms are over here. Not many. Only one, actually. One air random is over here. Uh, I've got one air random here. I do have two, three earth randoms, which is good. Because that means I can cast earth spells effectively. But uh, I'll need a few turns more of recruitment over there. And then I'll need to start recruiting uh, a couple of oppressors to set up the communions. Uh, I will also need... I'm. I'm recruiting lizards up here, which means I'm actually going to have a nature communion 
going up here. And I'm also recruiting uh, Shackled Mages in this fort. So they will be able to add to the communion so the Lizard Mages can boost themselves up very rapidly and easily to cast higher level Astral and Nature spells. Research-wise, I'm going up Enchantment, which is a great nature, a decent nature school at least. Um, and of course it will give me Flaming Arrows, which is what I really want, and Strength of Giants to buff my troops. Also going up Construction, I want to hit Construction level 4 pretty quickly, especially because I have recruited Ferris, the Adept of the Iron Order, who is a mercenary and a fairly expensive one. I had the money to burn, so I went ahead and recruited him. Uh, I overpaid pretty significantly to make sure I would get him. He comes with a bunch of gems, he's an effective combat mage, but mainly I want him because he can forge items that will be really useful, uh, including some of the astral boosting items that I'll be able to put on Lizard Shamans. So I have him for three turns. Right now he's just researching, he contributes significant research points. Uh, I'll be able to rehire him at the end of that period for a lot less money. And I'm hoping that in those three turns I can get up to construction level four. I think I can. Uh, one big problem is I currently have zero air gem income. Absolutely none. Which means that I can't really mass produce air quills. I'm forging one and that's taking all the air gems I got. And I... I have searched a significant chunk of my nation. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven... Eight. Nine. I've searched nine provinces up to level two air. Nothing. Absolutely no air sites whatsoever. I do have this mirror palace. It is an astral site, but it does give me an air gem. So I really, really want to take this place back. And then I'll just have to continue, I guess. Epitos is going down here. He's going to move in this direction to search for air sites. This guy's moving over here to search for air sites, and he'll come over there and search that place, and my water mages are coming over here to search, sweep up through here and search all around, and... Whew, it's gonna take a while, but I'll get all the sites I can. Um, of course, searching at level 2 does not find all the sites, it finds the vast majority, but there can be level 3 and level 4 sites. Um, my tyrants, of course, are also moving around. I I'm dedicating these two tyrants, Glissus and Smintheus, to moving around searching because they can search for death level 2. And I I have a lot of death gems, so once I get up enchantment and construction, I will be able to summon some guys that I can send to search for death sites, which will be good. But I need, I want death income. I want to be at least a minor death nation because that's kind of Flegra's end game. Um, Flegra's communions become powerful in the mid-game when they have had the time to amass slaves and set up communions that can cast all kinds of crazy elemental spells. They stop being powerful a little later on, and you need something to, to shift towards. I mean, they never stop being powerful, but they start being more easily countered as the game goes on. Um, next turn will be late winter. At that point... Early next spring, I will start recruiting oppressors. I don't want to recruit them in winter because they're almost immediately going to age and have to make an age check because they're old and they might get afflictions. But I'm going to conquer Marignan hopefully next turn. It should come down next turn. It's been critically damaged for two turns now. So I'll take Marignan down. Um, I kind of need to put this fort under siege to stop it from recruiting, but I also definitely need to besiege Marignan with several tyrants and make sure it goes down. Yeah, let's bring in three tyrants, I think. Um, Glissus is mostly ungeared in terms of... <sighs> I'm only going to hit enchantment level 3. I'm not going to get to enchantment level 4. Because level 4 will take 400 research points. I've got two turns. Nah, I won't get to it. Um, so, let me see. What spells could you cast? Do you have any spells that require gems? You don't. Um, Earth 3 guys can cast Blade Wind at this point. Which I don't have any. I'm not sending in Hulk Smash. Uh, I want Glissa's Sight Searching. I've got, to have, I've got to have more Sight Searching. I really do. I think this army will suffice. With the Cyclops leading the charge, 
the Helots backing them up with Javelins, and two Tyrants, plus a few random Gigantes in there. We've got three, four Gigantes. I think they can take the place. Um, the only wild card is the Baphomet, but the Baphomet shouldn't be able to have had a whole lot of research, so he shouldn't be all that dangerous. Um, I'm moving my Mer dudes down. I'll get down here to the Holy Sea and take that. After Merignon, we're going to take this throne at the step of Wild Horses. And we will start pushing out beyond our current borders. We've been mostly static in terms of size for several turns now, which is bad. Uh, we slowed. Our early expansion was good. After that, we slowed way, way down. And that's not kosher. It's not happy. I don't like it. Um, and I don't really have the Helot spam machine revved up right now. I am capturing slaves up there, but my tyrants just have too much to do, which is a problem with tyrants. Tyrants, the nation leans pretty heavily on tyrants. And the fact that they have to be running around doing everything, sight searching and doing the big battle casting and spamming helots means you can never have enough of them. Uh, I am recruiting one more Cyclops. I'm forging a Dwarven Hammer with Eurytus. Eurytus. Um, you don't need many Cyclops because you only need them for the Master Smith bonus that lets them forge higher level items. Uh, they do give you a research bonus, a resource bonus, sorry, but that's not very important. So one or two Cyclops and then I'm going to switch back to recruiting Tyrants and keep doing that for the rest of the game. Uh, I need a water random cyclops, I need an air random cyclops, and what else? I could also use... I think I also eventually need a fire random cyclops, I feel like. Huh? No, no I don't. I have enough fire from tyrants. Tyrants can forge fire items. Um, never mind that. But I need a... Uh, I need a two air cyclops. Do I? Yes, I need a two air cyclops because if I want to forge staves of elemental mastery, I need to have a two air cyclops wearing an air hat. No, I have to do it through the fire and water cross paths is what I have to do. I have to have a water random cyclops and I have to give him boosters. I have to give him a fire booster and two water boosters and then he can forge the fire water staff of elemental mastery. Um, I think there's a way to get to the Air and Earth Elemental Mastery staff as well, but whatever. Uh, and staffs of Elemental Mastery would be quite useful for me. Uh, I could hand them to Trophimos Oppressors to boost, boost their paths before they communion up. Well, to be honest, you don't really want to do that much. I'll think about it. I need to think about what it is that I need out of the Cyclops, but having a couple of them around is good because they can forge high-level items easily. Although, to be honest, I don't... I may not need another one right now. Yeah, let's get another Tyrant. Okay. I'm spamming out archers here in Flegra. Uh, and I will transfer them up to this fortress in the Forbidden Forest. Or up to Cerny, which has a little bit wider uh, angle of attack. Yellow Mountains has been conquered by a horde of knights. I think that was a province Vanheim owned, so... Shinoyama's probably breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief there. But, um, Shinoyama is also quite big. They have, I mean, I expected this. Great Grey Shrike is a good player, and Shinoyama is not a terrible nation. It's not really high tier, but it's not terrible. But they've got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Have to count on those being theirs. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18... That is an Ashdod fortress, which means that's probably also an Ashdod province. So I think they're a little smaller than me. Right now I have one, two, three, four, five. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six provinces. About to be twenty-seven when I take that back. Um, I was already counting this. I effectively already own the province, but I just have to take the fortress to seal the deal. So I'm bigger than Shinoyama, I think I have greater resources to bring to bear, and I think I can probably take them. Uh, and I'm going to have to take them because I don't have another option. Really, I don't. Now, in terms of resources, this would be a really nice place to have. Uh, this is five farms all next to each other. 
and assuming they have decent populations, which farms often do, uh, that's a ton of income right there. That's the land pristine, which has a throne on it. Yeah, Ashdod. So this is the Ashdod um, Abyssia border up here. Okay. So Ashdod is fairly long and skinny. I don't know where Ashdod's capital is yet, but Ashdod reaches all the way over to here. And Abyssia is here. That was Pythium, but I think Vanheim just took it back because that's Vanheim's capital. Uh, in terms of size, in terms of raw size, I think I may actually be the biggest right now, or close to the biggest. In terms of power, I am not the most powerful. Um, I think that I would probably give to Agartha, or possibly Ashdod. Ashdod has taken one of the real standard Anakite blesses. Um, it's regeneration and I want to say fortitude. It's basically the one that instead of making Anakites hyperspeed and killing machines, it makes them almost impossible to kill. Um, so Thunderstrike is going to be my answer to them since they don't have lightning resistance. But that will be for the future. For now, I have to clean this scenario up and I'm going to keep moving this way and then probably this way and this way. We, if we can catch Shinoyama in a fork with a whole bunch of troops, I think we can tear them apart pretty quickly. Uh, I have to assume that Shinoyama is at least even with me on research, probably further ahead if they've been focusing on it, because I was not m doing research until, like, turn 13 or 14. I just wasn't. So, that being so, they probably have level 4 in something. I I'm sure they have level 4 in something, possibly level 5. I mean, my level 4 is Evocation for Thunderstrike, and I should be looking to deploy that pretty quickly. But uh, deploying it against Shinoyama is going to be strategically a little bit difficult because all my slaves are over here. And I don't have many air slaves in the first place. So, bummer. Um, but... Once we get Marignan, our slave, I'll, I'll turn this into a Shackled Mage spam center, and it will spam out three of them every two turns, and that will help. And the Shackled Mages here will help. And this place will keep recruiting Lizard Shamans, and this place, it's going to upgrade next turn. Once it upgrades, I'm probably going to start bringing out Oppressors from it. Don't have any magic items sitting around. I am forging some magic items. I've formed forging a Dwarven Hammer here. Over here I'm forging an Owl Quill. Down here I'm forging a Main Gouge of Pairing and a Lodestone Amulet, which gives magic resistance. And where else? What else was I forging? I was also forging a... I thought I was having you forge a... Yeah, I should have you forge a Mace of Eruption. Uh, so I'll be able to kit out... Uh, Idiocrates. Finish kidding out Idiocrates. Idiocrates. Since he is my prophet, he's holy three. He gets bonuses in my dominion. Um, and increased attack and defense skill from being the prophet, which makes him a lot better of a thug. Uh, now, the downside to him, of course, is that I have to... If he dies, then that's my prophet dead, so I have to worry about that. But should be able to handle it should be able to handle it with the proper items with the proper gear he'll be reasonably well protected now one thing ferris can theoretically forge the crystal shield which casts power of the spheres and power of the spheres increases your power in all paths of magic it's a great spell it really is especially because i believe if i give this to an oppressor and it casts at the beginning of the battle, it should also apply to all of the communion slaves and increase all their powers in their paths of magic, which would be really nice. Um, it does give four encumbrance, which is kind of a bummer, but in any case, he needs to be astral level three to cast it, which means he needs to... We need to get construction level four so he can forge the starshine skull cap to boost his astral magic. Um, I can't count on having Ferris forever, but I want to re-recruit him at least once so I can use him to forge a couple of important items and then ideally get him killed because I wouldn't really want anyone else using him. He is, he's a very, very useful mage. 
and I would I would like him to either be under my control forever or dead. Um, one thing I may do, well, I don't have blood magic. If I had blood magic, I would forge a slave collar, and the turn that I decided I didn't need to re-recruit him, I would give him a slave collar. But I can't forge slave collars. Anyway, um, that's going to be the turn. Uh, I've made all my moves. Uh, Hulk Smash is sight searching. I don't want him in combat. Uh, that guy's sight searching. We've got lots of sight searching going on all over the place. Not that it's paying off, but it's it's always worth a try. Polydaminus is moving down here to build another temple. That will get me up to five, which will help my domain push, uh, which will help my profit. And from there, we will see where we go. So thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next turn. All right, it's turn 23. Um, Empire hasn't changed all that much. We lost another scout. We took back Ablok, which had been conquered by Trogdolites with minimal casualties, thanks to our Tyrant and Sage and all that that were with us. Uh, Jintmark was once again conquered by Facia, which is an annoyance. It's not crippling, but it is an annoyance. That Enchanted Pyre does give us a gem. Um, we found a site. We finally found a site. We only had to search with our freaking Pretender to find a site that gives us one nature gem. So we finally now actually do have nature income, which is a plus. Uh, Marignan has been breached, so we are going to be assaulting this turn. My only real question is, how much do I need to storm with? The fact that it took this long makes me think they have significant crap inside. So I kind of want to take in, like all my guys here. The problem with that is their morale is low and so they might actually be a downside um, because they might route and when they route they might take all my troops with them. I'm definitely bringing in the archers. Uh, I'm not sure about all of my Helot warriors. Like I might take Alzones here who has kind of an army. I might take him and all the troops I've got over here to, like, go take this back. It's just Facian Light Infantry and Militia. Even my troops can conquer that. And the main killing power here is going to be my Cyclops Warriors and my Tyrants. Um, the Cyclops Warriors, unfortunately, are going to charge in first. Which is kind of a bummer because I do not want them going in alone. Which means I kind of have to send in some Helots with them as well. So... The Cyclops are size 4, which means they can have a Helot on their square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those guys in box formation. And I'm going to have them... <sighs> yeah, I'm going to have them just attack closest. Uh, and and Antifata Antifati's here can be up right behind them. And he's going to first Iron Skin himself for defensive purposes. And then he's going to be throwing Earth Meld to stick the Marignonese soldiers down and prevent them from accomplishing anything. Um, otherwise, my troops are kind of hanging back. I will be firing a whole lot of arrows. I don't have Flaming Arrows active yet, which really I should. Um, I, I've had enough research. I should have hit Enchantment Level 4 at this point and activated Flaming Arrows, but I've been working on other things. Um, I am taking kind of a slightly slower route in terms of my research. Um, I'm still not getting many air random communion slaves, which is a real bummer. Um, but my research is picking up. My research is up to 330. Uh, partially because I got an event that gave me a skull mentor, which boosts my research significantly. Uh, I was attacked in Shade Forest by a gang of knights, which normally would absolutely take the province, but unfortunately they happened to attack while uh, Hippolytus was here searching for sites. And I have Hippolytus scripted to fight because I've scripted all my tyrants to fight, just in case. Uh, actually, it looks like he's not scripted properly. He cast Flying Shield and then Fire Shield. But you know what? That's fine. Because it means he's, like, not going to die. <laughs> and now he's just casting Fireballs in melee. So all the knights surrounded Hippolytus. Um, they hit him once, and then his protection went up to 28. And with the Fire Shield, anyone who hits him is taking damage of being set on fire. So, it's just a bad day all around for these knights and their minions. Uh, and then Hippolytus chased him off. So, good going, Hippolytus.
Uh, lots of patrollers and everything. Breach Marignan. We finished our fortress upgrade in Delca, so we are now recruiting. I'm actually recruiting two commanders because I'm prepping for the attack on Shinoyama, which will be happening sometime in the next few turns. Um, I've got Idiocrates capturing slaves. I'm recruiting another tyrant who will be moving in that direction. This turn, I forged a decent amount of equipment, and I got that sword from Tianqi. So Idiocrates now has a Mace of Eruption, a Main Gauche of Parrying, a Black Steel Helmet, and a Lodestone Amulet, which increases his magic resistance. I don't know that that is vital at this point, but it will be vital in the future, and so I want to kind of future-proof a little bit. Also, I can forge him with my, A1 sla my E1 slaves, so it doesn't hardly cost me nothing. Uh, Bracers of Protection would be another decent earth item I could forge, but I want to save a miscellaneous slot for like a booster or something. So we're going to forge another Lodestone Amulet, and since I do have Fire Gems and some Fire Income, I'm also going to forge another... Actually, I have weapons, don't I, still? Yeah, I have weapons. What I need to forge is... I need to forge another Helmet. Um, there's kind of two options. I could forge a Crown of Lead, which would give some head protection and also a little bit of magic resistance. Or I can forge a Black Steel Helmet, which gives a ton of head protection, but no extra magic resistance. Um, either would be good on Tyrants. Because if they're kitted and scripted properly with enough research, they're really, really hard to kill by any method except magic. And MR negates spells are the best for that purpose. Uh, you can also forge the Lead Shield, which lowers your defense value, but gives you a higher parry. So, and with 23 protection plus his protection, the, a shield hit will pretty much block anything. It adds encumbrance, though, which I don't really want to do. I mean, I already have to give these guys a ton of reinvigoration, because when they berserk, they get four extra fatigue. So, like, uh, tyrants. Yeah, so they start off with three encumbrance. Then when they berserk, that gives them an extra four which means they're getting 7 fatigue per round in melee combat. I can give them Summon Earth Power gives 4 reinvigoration, uh, a Belt gives 2, and Shoes give 2, so that's up to 8, which is fine, but if I add a Lead Shield, then they're up to 10 fatigue per round of melee combat, and I have to have them be fatigue neutral or fatigue negative while they're Berserk because otherwise they will eventually fall unconscious from fatigue and lose the Berserk and try to rout and get murdered. So, mm, adding fatigue is really bad juju. Now, the, the Sword of the Five Elements gives extra reinvigoration, which is nice. Um, that makes it kind of a decent weapon, even though it only hits one guy. It also has a significant defense boost, so dual wielding a Mace of Eruption at a Sword of the Five Elements is probably a decent strategy in giving up on the main gauche or shield altogether. Uh, what I would like to do, actually, is get a Nature 2 guy who can forge me uh, Vine Shields, because Vine Shields are fantastic defensive thug items. But that'll be for the future. For now, I am continuing to recruit uh, Communion Slaves over here in preparation for an eventual war with Pythium. It will take a little while. Down here, I'm still sight searching with just a whole bunch of dudes. Hippolytus is moving to continue sight searching. I'm searching for air, I'm searching for water, I'm moving this guy over here to build a temple, I'm searching for death with Glissus, who is wearing that armor of souls that gives him plus five magic resistance, which is a great item for him to have. Hulk Smash is moving around. Hulk Smash can search for earth and nature sites at a very high level, and that's kind of what I'm using him for right now, but to be honest, I probably shouldn't. To be honest, I should be putting him into a fortress where he can either research or cast spells. Unfortunately, earth and nature gems I'm very, very short of. So I want, I desperately want earth and nature sites, especially because my gem income is still awful. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 11. It's 11. Um, how is it 11? I thought it was 9 last time I checked. I found the Grove of Evergreens, but I've actually lost a site there. Did I find another site or something? Not this turn. Okay, well, I've gotten another site. Oh, I got the site. I got the site back in Oblock. That's right. I got the Mirror Palace, which gives me an air and an astral pearl. So now I have an astral income and an air income, but they're both just tiny and pathetic. Um, yeah, I, I, oh boy, I need sites so badly. It's really awful that fire is my highest income and it's three. 
It's just god awful. Once I take the House of Just Fires, of course, it'll get a lot better, but fire gems are still not the very best. Research wise, I am going to hit construction level four as quickly as I can. After that, after that, the priority is, I think, enchantment four to get flaming arrows. Once I have enchantment for, uh, I have the spells to create revenants now. So construct as soon as I hit construction four, which will be in two turns, I will move uh, Glissus back to a lab and Sminthius. Actually, Sminthius is, needs to be searching for sites as well, since this province has not been searched for those paths at all. And then he needs to probably go up here. But Sminthius and um, Glissus will need to retire to labs for a couple of turns and they will be summoning one revenant and forging one skull staff per turn for like two or three turns, which will mostly deplete my death gems, but it will give me uh, several death two dudes that I can have wandering around searching for death sites while my tyrants do other things. Um, because my main problem with the tyrants is that I, I want them to be doing too many things at one time. So I'm not terribly worried about fire site searching because I don't need fire gems all that much. I'm not terribly worried earth site searching. I would like, but I can get that with Trophimos Sages if I need to. I have some earth random sages who could wander around searching for earth sites. And I really, really want to have tyrants spawning warriors and then fighting on the front lines. So I'm not worried about this right now. They might come and try to besiege my fortress, which would be a terrible, terrible mistake. But they might do it because they're the AI and dumb. And if they do, I'll kick them right back out again. I'm going to kick the defense up here to six, but my army definitely needs to take out Marignan. Uh, I'm still undecided about how many troops to send, because the, the, the issue just is having too many troops will actually kind of be a detriment. Uh, Talimanes. Tell you what, Talimanes. Why don't you take 32 Helot infantry? Go down here. They've got about 60. Facian Light Infantry and Militia. Up here, I've got Fenag. His troops are not going to be high morale, but they will still be troops, and I can set these guys to attack rear. So Fenag, go down here and take with you... What water spells can I cast? Nothing valuable. Absolutely nothing valuable. Well, Numbness. I can cast Numbness. That's actually a pretty good spell. So what I could do is... Here. Astros, give that to him. Nisiros, give that to him. You two join the fight here. And... Let's script up something real quick. So these guys, we're going to give them no orders. We're going to give these guys no orders. We're going to have our two water mages right up there. And they are going to be scripted to cast first. Um, they can't cast Ice Shield because they're not underwater. But I want them to do something just to... I just want them to waste a turn, basically. Hold one turn and then start casting Numbness. Yeah, do that. Okay. And then, of course, cast spells and cast spells. Great. So, those two plus... Yeah, two mages plus 60 Helit troops should should basically solve the problem. Um, They're taking a penalty here because they're in Hostile Dominion. Down here, they're not in Hostile Dominion. There's no Dominion, so it shouldn't be an issue. I am going to have to contact Ulm and let him know, like, look... I can't have Oak Beach constantly launching troops at me, so I'm going to have to take it. Uh, Ulm has once again broken free from the forces of quote-unquote independence. I sincerely have trouble believing this is independence at this point, and Ulm is screwed now. Uh, losing their capital for, what was it, four consecutive turns like that? Uh-uh. There ain't no coming back from that. Uh, he's... Unless he's a lot bigger than I think he is, he's pretty hosed. So, that's going to be an issue. Um, Agartha is coming down over here and taking over the Water Provinces, which is fine. He should give some of those to me. There was a battle in Solaria. 
It says there was a fight in Solaria. Uh, discovered and attacked in Holberg. I don't see it, though. Okay. Apparently there was a fight in Solaria, but I don't get to see it. Uh, and Facia has... AI Facia has just taken over a whole bunch of Solaria. Solaria is also, of course, screwed. Um, interestingly, Ermor's army has actually pulled back. Which I think is because their capital is under siege by Vanheim. They've got Abyssia on this side and Agartha on this side. And they don't have great answers to any of them. So that's fantastic, and I love it, and I want more of it because I do want Ermor to die. I would also like Ermor to die without Solaria getting their death gems, because Solaria has lots of easy, really good uses for death gems, and Ermor's capital has a site that gives you, I think, nine death gems per turn. It's huge. I would much rather that, like, Agartha or Vanheim got that, because they don't have nearly so much death magic, they don't nearly have so many good uses for death gems. Vanheim has been doing this thing. It's interesting. He's cast Call of the Winds at least twice, I think, because that's the only spell I can think of that gives you Black Hawks as units. Black Hawks are worthless in combat. Absolutely garbage. They get beaten by archers. But they are good patrollers. So I feel like Vanheim is summoning Black Hawks to patrol, and I, I, I feel like this partially because I've lost two scouts now in this province in Holberg. And so he's patrolling with these Black Hawks. Nor now, Vanheim has blood magic, and normally if a blood nation is summoning a whole bunch of troops that are useless for everything except patrolling, that means he's hunting for blood slaves in a province. But hunting for blood slaves in a fortress province is a bad idea because unrest from the blood hunting comes before income generation and so reduces your income, and then the patrollers kick in and reduce unrest again later on in the turn resolution order. So, patrolling doesn't actually affect the un the income lost you get that turn, if that makes sense. So doing it on a fort, on a plains, which is going to be one of your highest income provinces, is a really bad idea. But I don't know what else Vanheim could be doing massing freaking Black Hawks, because like 60 Black Hawks, 60 Black Hawks could legitimately lose to six province defense. Okay, not in that province. But in this province, like, I would bet on this force to just beat the brakes off 60 Black Hawks. They are that bad. So, I don't know what's going on there. It's possible that he's doing it just to patrol and keep me from having a scout here that might see, like, a military buildup, but he's elves. So, most of his troops are going to be invisible anyway. It's interesting. Yeah, this is definitely a, a Call of the Winds force. Great Hawks and leading a, a bunch of Black Hawks come from Call of the Winds and nowhere else. So, uh, that's going to be the turn. We'll see what happens next turn. What I, in a way, in a way, what I should be doing right now is recruiting like three Trophimos oppressors each over here and maybe even in the capital and then rushing Pythium with a, com with a communion backed up by a ton of slaves. That would probably be the most efficient play. Where does he have a Camazots from? Camazots. Mercenaries? No, he's got the Black Fists. I've got the Iron Wizards. Marignan has Duran's Cavalry. Where... Camazots. I'm trying to remember which one's Camazots are. Uh, I'm actually going to try to steal Duran's cavalry, because they're heavy cavalry units. Uh, we just saw over here Duran's cavalry capture this province from Tianxi, which is interesting, because I didn't... I don't think there's much over there, but we're going to try to hire them. It would be nice to have them, and I have money at the moment, so we're going to bid 260. Um, and if we get them, then we'll go straight into this province and take it over from AI Nazca. Nazca does have... A big, big blob of undead right here, led by a Malki. But uh, Tianxi and uh, Shinuyama have pretty effectively wiped out most of their territory. I want to take this province basically to establish a foothold on this side of the river, and then this army can swing right up that way. Um, yeah, I'm not going after 
these guys after Pythium because I've already decided that I'm going after Shinoyama first and I think Shinoyama's in a weaker position. They're more spread out. Uh, this is a little worrisome. I don't know why they have four Bakemono Sorcerers sitting right near the border. It might be to keep an eye out to make sure that I don't do what I am about to do. Might be. Could be. It's possible. If it is, it's not going to stop me because four Bakemono Sorcerers with no backup are powerful and dangerous. I mean, magically speaking, they're actually strictly superior to Flagrant Tyrants. But without a whole lot of gear, they can't stop me. So, the problem is I don't have the stuff on this side to go in with a, uh, with a bomb and communion. It's all over here. Um, hmm. Well, how long would it take to get over there? One, what's your map move? Fourteen. Planes cost six. So one, and then I know there's a, a shortcut to do this, but I don't remember it right at the moment, so I'm working it out in my head. Uh, you pay the average of movement costs to move, so caves are 12. So they move up there. Then this is a plains province, so that would be nine plus six. So it's going to be one, two, plains, plains. Three, it's going to be three turns to get to this fort. And then one more turn to move up ready to attack. So that would be four turns. Uh, yeah, it might be worth starting to move some slaves around. Let's start. I'm losing a little bit of research. Not all that much because slaves don't really contribute much. But let's, let's filter some slaves over. Actually, I'll tell you what. Let's filter that slave over as well. So we're moving three there. These two will keep in place researching, except this one will have him forge the lodestone amulet. So by the time we go in, we're going to have Idiocrates. We're going to have one more tyrant here. We're probably going to have three tyrants. And this place is recruiting Trophimos commanders right now. Hmm don't really want that. What I do want is I've given Eurotus a hammer so he can forge things a little bit cheaper. I do want an oppressor's headband to maybe put on one of my lizards, although I don't have great nature spells yet, because the good nature spell is alteration 5. Yeah, the good nature spell is wooden warriors. They can naturally cast Communion Master, though, so as long as I have Slaves, these guys at Alteration 5, these guys will be able to cast Wooden Warriors. I already have Evocation 4, so I can already Thunderstrike. Uh, I can't both Thunderstrike and Wooden Warriors off the same Communion without murdering my Slaves, because Wooden Warriors is fatigue cost 50. So here's how it's, the calculation is going to work out. If these guys Communion Master with 8 Communion Slaves... Uh, with eight slaves, they'll be nature four. That will make... I might be able to, actually, because that will make the cost, the fatigue cost of wooden warriors 13. So 13 fatigue divided by nine. Everybody's taking less than two. Multiply that up by four for not having the paths. Actually, that would still work. If I have eight communion slaves, I can definitely spam wooden warriors like, to my heart's content, and I can probably still get Thunderstrikes off the same Communion. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm going to do then. So I've got three slaves coming in, and they are Earth and Air randoms. I've got one slave there, so it's going to be three, four uh, Trophimos commanders for one turn actually tell you what yeah that's fine that is fine give this to him have this guy move up there so that's three four five slaves i need three more slaves and at least two or three trophimos oppressors is what i need uh, by the time i launch the war uh, i already probably have enough lizard shamans for now so we're gonna swap to Trophimos Oppressor there. 
We're going to get our two commanders there. They'll be good to have line formations. My my tyrants can lead armies, but they can't give them formations. Uh, might just have to live with that. I might just have to live with that, because if I have three tyrants, I can give the archers to independent commanders, of which I have a couple. And this guy's moving out with a gang of archers. So that's fine. So yeah, stop doing that. Start recruiting shackled mages. We'll get a couple of shackled mages. We'll get probably two Trophimos oppressors out of here. We'll get uh, a couple and a couple of slaves. I think I can do this. I think I can be set up to invade Shinuyama in a serious way in about three or four turns. Probably, let's give it four turns, because we're going to finish a guy here next turn. Two more turns to get the next one. One turn to have them in place. Yeah, four turns and we'll go into Shinuyama, I think. And over here, hopefully we'll take Marignan this turn, take that next turn, move the army up, and be pretty much ready to roll. And we will also probably besiege this if for no other reason than just to lock it down, because I cannot be having with this. Uh, this throne, I also do want to take. It does have those wizards that are a little bit scary, so it's going to take a significant commitment of forces in order to capture it. I may be able to bounce. Can Idiocrates reach it in one turn? No. Okay. Because, see, like, the main thing that's dangerous there is fire. Is fire elementals. And tyrants are already fire resistant. So... If I hit Alteration 4 for Temper Flesh, and I just go Iron Skin, Temper Flesh, go in and fight, with the right gear, a Tyrant can probably solo that province. Because otherwise, all they have is level 1 wizards. It's only really, um, if I recall correctly, it's only Fire that has a high level mage. I'm going to bounce a guy off it again just to remind myself because I don't remember. I could go back and look at the turn. I'll, I'm going to go back and look at my turn just to confirm. But yeah, I think I can probably solo that with Idiocrates. Like, as he's geared now, if I hit Alteration 4, I can solo that. And I am going to be researching Alteration anyway. 400 research points for that. So Construction Level 3. I'll hit Level 3 next turn. That will give me Legions of Steel. I should hit level 4. Yeah, level 4 would take 2 turns after that. And I also want Enchantment 4. So I'm going to go Construction, Enchantment, and then I need 2 levels of Alteration, which are going to be 1,100 Research Points. Ah, uh, brother. Brother, brother, brother. Don't think I'm going to make it in 4 turns. I have to pick whether I want Flaming Arrows or Wooden Warriors. Mm hmm. What an interesting conundrum. An interesting conundrum indeed. This is my fault for not being more efficient with research, but... <sighs> Since I already have a whole bunch of wooden... I mean, I'm going to have a whole bunch of Flaming Arrows guys in place too. So I just have to choose whether I want to go in with high protection... Helots or high damage flaming arrow archers. Actually, having both would be a terrible idea anyway, because if you cast wooden warriors and flaming arrows in the same battle, your archers will absolutely murder your troops, because your troops will all be fire vulnerable and will be set on fire very easily. Um. Yeah, let's take flaming arrows. That will lessen the pressure on the communion slaves. And let them, and I'll go in with Thunder Strikes if at all possible. It will kind of depend on how many air random Trophimos oppressors I manage to, re to recruit. But if I have at least two or three, they'll be able to make a significant contribution just by Thunder Strike spamming. Um, and now, I was about to say he won't expect that out of Flegra, but if he's watching my videos, which I know Great Grey Shrike does, he'll have noted that I can Thunder Strike spam with Flegra Communions. So the other possibility. The other option, if I can't do Thunderstrike spam, is Acid Rain, which is basically Falling Fires, but it does slightly less damage over a larger area of effect, and it's unresistible. Plus it rusts armor, which won't hurt me very much because my armor is mostly leather, I think. 
I don't think it'll affect my armor. It will affect my weapons. But it has this cool little area rust ability. So I can also cast Acid Rain. So if he's prepared for Thunderstrike, he might not be prepared for Acid Rain. And of course, vice versa. Okay, yeah, that's the plan. Four turns, we're going in against Shinoyama. Uh, we'll take this. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. And we'll, uh... Otherwise, we'll do it live. Why are you guys way back here? Get up here. And are all my commanders scripted to hold? You don't need to be in the fight. You are earth melding to beat the band. That's fine. Um, I actually do want... Yeah, what's going to happen is the Cyclops are going to end up going in first, and I want them to be relatively unobstructed. And then the Tyrants will go in with their small bodyguard units, and hopefully they'll be able to force their way through whatever crap Marignan has holding this castle. I can't tell how many units they have. So... Yeah. This is just information. Okay. We'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching. That is turn 23. I'll see you in turn 34, 24, where we decipher who won the Siege of Merignan. See you then. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's turn 24 of honor. Uh, we are prepping for the wars. Uh, we are going into this Nazkin province next turn. We hired Durand the Great with his heavy cavalry. And he and his eight elite heavy cavalry should be able to clear this province of barbarians and wolf tribe warriors. Um, I think I may send these Helot archers. I can't send these Helot archers with him. I just can't. Yeah, we're just sending Durand in alone. He's going to bomb in there, see if he can clear the royal green out. If he can, great. If he can't, he's dead, and no one will really care. But I think he can. Uh, heavy cavalry has really high defense skills, and they have multiple attacks, all of which are pretty solid. So they should be able to do it. Uh, the big news. The big news is the battle at Marignan. So as you can see here, the enemy had, uh, they have their god, Richard Milhouse Nixon, the Baphomet, who is a giant flying head uh, with lots of fire, astral, and blood magic. They also had a huge quantity of witch hunters and initiates stacked up here. This was their research core, clearly. They also had a bunch of summoned fire drakes. They clearly spent the last several turns just summoning fire drakes with somebody. And a few random infantry and flagellants and all that good stuff. Um, but mainly mages and the fire drakes. Uh, they also had all of their crossbowmen, which are their fort defenders. And those crossbowmen, who boy, they, they did some work on me, along with an inquisitor leading them. So here's what happened. My archers start firing. The guys on the walls have huge defense against missiles, so these arrows are just being wasted. They're not accomplishing anything. My infantry, meanwhile, go in, led by the Cyclops warrior, and holy crap, a huge wave of crappy, worthless fire spells <laughs> inundate me with flames. Um, he burns up a huge quantity of his own troops here. This is mainly good for me because these fire drakes are using up their drake fire ammunition. Uh, shooting at my Cyclops, which are not great targets for Drake Fire, because the armor piercing is wasted on them and they have a lot of hit points, as opposed to all that Drake Fire hitting my Helots. However, my Helots are routing in any case. You can see their morale is not great because they're Helots. So the lead wave of Helot Warriors is already running away. But that's fine. My Cyclops have gotten in. They've beaten down some of the Drakes. They're going to get in and do a little bit of damage here and then die. Uh, this Giganti warrior is going to go in bravely alone, followed by this one. And they are also going to get into the mages and start stabbing, do a little bit of damage. Uh, they actually laid a hit on Richard Milhouse Nixon here, this Giganti warrior, and then he got flame bonded, which won't bother him because he's berserk, but being exploded by a flare will. Uh, up here, this is the problem. My troops all got distracted. They all got distracted and wasted a whole bunch of time killing these guys. Somehow, in the process, Pronos failed a morale check. Um, he never got into combat and never got hurt, so he never went berserk. Uh, to be honest, I've buffed his defense skill so high that it's hard for him to get hit, which is might actually be a negative, considering I want these guys to go berserk. But in any case, I've, I've altered equipment since then. So, Pronos is running away. Meanwhile, his 
Big Brother Aristotle is up on the wall, happily stabbing people to death with his dual main gouges of parrying. Uh, and the archers have now run out of ammunition, and they're going to charge. Um, all that's left is the Baphomet and the mages. So my Helot warriors get in, they kill a few mages, and then they start to run, because they are attacking the Baphomet, and the Baphomet has a fire shield that does 18 AP damage, and so they're just butchering themselves by attacking him. Uh, more fireballs and other fire spells are being cast. It's basically just Richard Milhouse Nixon left, and he has been worn down. He's ethereal, but he only has, well, zero protection. So, uh, yeah, he routes the, the remainder of the Helots because they're chickens and they're tired of burning to death. But Aristotle then rushes in, stabs him to death, uh, doesn't hardly take any damage doing it because he is, he's not actually Berserk. He's just cast Iron Skin on himself. Yeah, he's not even Berserk. Neither of them went Berserk in this battle. And then he just runs around slaughtering mages until the battle is over. So, it was a win. Now, we did, of course, have a lot of casualties and a lot of retreating. We lost 137 troops. They lost 94 troops. Average quality higher on their side, so I'm not upset about it. Um, my tyrants did okay, except for Pronos running away like that. Bad Pronos. Very, very bad. Uh, retreat details. Everybody ran away. Literally everyone, except for that one tyrant and a few random units that he led. But we took the fortress, so... Uh, Merignon sent us a message that we killed their god, and so they hate us. Uh, we also retook Jintmark. This was a very simple and straightforward battle. Uh, my two Trophimos sages contributed a great deal by casting uh, Numbness onto the Colossi, onto the Facian Light Infantry as they tried to flank me. So my Helot soldiers and Helot warriors actually got a very favorable, favorable kill-to-death ratio. Uh, a bunch of them did still run away, including the sages for some reason when infantry fled past them. But you know what? I'll allow it. Uh, in Abi, we did lose this province to dire wolves. Uh, yeah, just wolves. Sometimes this is a spell, sometimes it's a random event. With uh, Misfortune 3, I'm betting it's a random event. Uh, we found an air site, the Thunder Oak. So we now do have two per month air income, which is something. And we researched construction level 3. So, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, Ur has moved in, or Uruk has moved in to besiege this fortress. I've already told him off for that, and we're moving troops to take it ourselves. His army can't stand up to mine. I mean, his army can certainly stand up to Helots, but um, his troops don't wear helmets, so arrows are actually surprisingly effective against them, and uh, er I'm moving in a tyrant, and he can't really stop a tyrant Especially when that Tyrant has Iron Skin and Fire Shield up. He'll go Berserk. His protection will go up to about 30. He will still take damage from, like, Iron Warriors, but I think I can take it. Especially with Magical backup, I, I'm pretty sure I can take it. And I have to move Astros back in. And Niseros, actually. We'll move these guys back in so that they can continue to... Uh, throw Numbness. Uruk has agreed to pull back, so I expect he'll do that. If he doesn't, there will be a fight. I think I can win it with uh, with my troops. I have about 100 soldiers all told. 86 over there. Another 29 over here. We'll bring these guys along as well. And then I also have about 36 troops already in here. So overall, up to about 150. Uh, I think we can take out 60 Enkidu with 150 troops led by a tyrant and two mages. As I said, Duran the Great is going into Nazcan territory. Up here, we are preparing for the invasion of Shinuyama. Uh, we're recruiting Trophimos oppressors. Uh, D-Day is in about... In two turns, I'm going to start moving. In three turns, I think, is when the invasion launches. We're forging some stuff, forging a Mace of Eruption. Here, we're forging... Uh, a lodestone amulet and three dragon helms. We're actually really, really low on earth gems because our earth gem income is also awful. So we definitely need to find some more earth sites too. Uh, Hippolytus is still searching for magic sites. Glissus is moving up to join Idiocrates. Eurymedon is moving up in this direction. He's going to move up there, search for sites, and then pop over to join the army. So one turn, two turns, three turns. He'll be right here. That's when we'll launch the attack. Um, who else? Ah, uh, Smintheus is moving over here. One turn, 
I haven't decided yet whether he's going to research or summon a revenant there. Well, I mean, search for magic sites or summon a revenant. Um, I may leave him behind to start us boosting into death. Because I don't really have enough gear to fully equip all my tyrants anyway. And I do want to start bootstrapping into death. I will hit enchantment level 4 next turn. And I'll hit construction level 4 the turn after that. So with enchantment level 4, I I'm already actually able to summon revenants. With enchantment level 4, I'll have flaming arrows. Um, so I'll move Smintheus over here, probably then summon a revenant, forge a skull staff. I have one dwarven hammer that I'll hand off to him. Forge a skull staff and uh, send that revenant with the skull staff off to search for magic sites. Probably I'll then summon another one and forge another skull staff. Or what I may actually do is just have the revenant then summon more revenant, another revenant, and just spend time forging skull staffs with Smintheus to keep equipping them and spend probably a bunch of my death gems doing that and then send them off to search all the sites that I haven't yet searched at level 2 death so that my tyrants can focus on other things. Um, I'm not too fussed about fire because especially with the capture of Marignan's capital, my fire income is actually decent. 8 fire gems is okay. Everything else is quite low. My overall gem income is good at this point or at least decent. I'm up to 19 I think I counted. 6, 7, 8... Uh, 10, 18. I'm up to 18, which is okay. 18 at turn 24, not terrible. Uh, Research-wise, my research is, I think, more spread out and lower level than a lot of people's. There's a lot of people, I think I've noticed Shinoyama has gotten up to uh, enchantment level 5, which I know because I watched a battle of theirs and saw them casting Horde of Skeletons. And uh, Pythium, I believe, has gotten up to conjuration level 5 because... Over here, I notice he has a province with trolls in it. And those are mainly gotten from the Conjuration 5 spell Summon Trolls, or Contact Trolls. Now, I didn't think Pythium had a whole lot of earth magic. So, I mean, if you look at research, Conjuration level 5. Contact Trolls takes 3 earth. He's got 8 trolls there, which makes me think think he's got I mean it might be that his god has level six earth uh let me look at Pythium's god Pythium 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 statue of Kirk oh he's got a statue yeah he might have earth magic he might have done that because I can't think of any other way he doesn't have earth magic natively so it's weird that he has trolls but he must have summoned them somehow in any case, um, either that or he got some kind of mercenary unit. There aren't any troll mer- Oh no, those are mercenaries, never mind, that's a mercenary gang. Okay, never mind, I don't know what Pythium has. Um, but I know that Shinoyama has Enchantment 5 because there was a battle in uh, Black Peaks where AI Nazca attacked Shinoyama. And I actually love this battle, this battle made me really happy because in this battle two things. I got to see Nazca's Bless, and something really good for me happened. So Nazca, just this is just a crap army of a ton of undead. Um, they do have these Condor Warriors, and Nazca's Bless is pretty beefy. It's mainly minor blesses, not all, but he has attack skill, decay weapons, shock resistance, defense, magic resistance, health, strength, and blood surge. So that's fire, death, air, water, astral, either blood or nature, Earth or blood, and blood. I don't think all three of these can be from blood. I would guess that he probably has blood and earth. Although I honestly don't know why he has blood except for blood surge. But in any case, that's clearly a rainbow god and a very widely pathed rainbow at that. But what's interesting here is um, Shinoyama overall took very few casualties because most of the Nazcan troops are solos who are just absolute garbage. They did take some, however, because of this. This rear attack by the flying Nazcan elites charged in, and they got Miki the Bakemono Sorcerer. Now, Miki had cast Summon Earth Power, and then was casting Horde of Skeletons. So that means Conjuration 3, Enchantment 5 at least. Uh, and Bakemono Sorcerers are quite scary. I mean, you can look at this guy. He has 3 Death, 3 Earth, 2 Fire, and 1 Water. So he can cast, potentially, Bakemono Sorcerers can cast Acid Spells, they can definitely cast Horde of Skeletons, they can cast big Earth spells, 
They're very, very powerful. Magically more powerful than my tyrants. So seeing one killed here really makes me happy. Uh, it just, I, I really enjoy the fact that he was killed. Because that's a significant setback. Especially because Bakemono Sorcerers are, I believe, capital-only slow-to-recruit units. Let me double-check that, actually. I'm pretty sure they are. Uh, not Tianxi. There we go. Bakemono Sorcerers, they're slow to recruit. And I believe they're capital only? They may not be capital only. They might just be slow to recruit. Okay, I think they're probably just slow to recruit. But in any case, I I definitely want to see them die as much as possible. Because he does have a bunch of them. Uh, the Bakamono Sorcerers who were here moved away, so I think they were sight searching. I think they're over here at this point. Yeah, 20 enemy units, mainly die Bakamonos and Ubas, but commanded by a Bakamono Sorcerer. So, yeah, I'm going to have one more turn, or possibly two more turns of recruiting slaves, and then I'm going to recruit another Trophimos uh, Oppressor over here. I got a Water Random, so Water Random means he can't Thunderstrike, but he can cast Acid Spells. Which is, eh, okay. Four Fire, four Water, he'll be able to cast Acid Spells very, very effectively. I was hoping he would be able to Thunderstrike. But, you know, you don't always get what you want. Over here, I'm starting to recruit slaves at a rate of three per two turns. I'm also recruiting heavy cavalry and archers. And over here, I'm recruiting cataphract. If I had more gold, I could also throw in some archers, but I've run out of gold. Uh, still searching with Hulk Smash. I don't really want to send him into battle. It might be a decent idea, but really, I'm desperately trying to increase my earth and nature gem income. Uh, Glissus, moving up. All my tyrants are moving around. I am recruiting another Cyclops since I'm about to hit Construction 4 and Construction's about to get wild and crazy uh, as soon as I get more Earth Gems. Uh, water Gems I've actually built up quite a few of despite having like no income. Uh, I've been searching for water and finding nothing. Absolutely nothing. But my Water and Air Sages are continuing to move around to research. My Lizard Shamans are continuing to move around to find sites. I mean, they're moving around to site search, you know what I mean. Uh, and I'm also moving down here to claim this province that Agartha promised I could have, Boat Eater, underwater. So that will be fun. And uh, that's the turn. We'll have a couple more turns of build-up. I'm gonna, over here I'm recruiting archers for one turn, and then I'm gonna go re-clear this province from the wolves. Shouldn't be too hard, they're not tough. Uh, all I need my infantry to do is live long enough for the archers to shoot them to death. And I might send a Drastos with to cast fireballs or something, I don't know. But so it shouldn't be too, too bad. Uh, and I hope and pray and anticipate that the war with Shinoyama will be... <clears throat> I'm not going to say easy, but relatively simple. Especially because I have been talking with Agartha as well, and Agartha is interested in coming in with me. So my goal for the war with Shinoyama will be basically to take these provinces, like these ones, and then hopefully also Shinoyama itself, the capital. If Agartha takes all this mess up here, that will be just fine with me. And he probably will be able to because he can come through the water. Uh, and he can take that mess over there as well. I don't know if that is Ashdod's territory or Shinoyama's, but I'd like to find out. Uh, one potential monkey wrench. This army could turn and attack me after I take this province, or they could move to this province this turn and accidentally wipe out Durand, also declaring war on me. That would be problematic, because most of these troops are moving down here, uh, so I have to recruit up more troops in order to go in that direction. Aristotle is moving right now. I think, actually, he should probably capture slaves for a few turns. And Glissus is going to go up here and capture slaves with Idiocrates. Uh, that will provide enough leadership for the army and morale support. And it will also double my infantry output here. So I'll have plenty of chaff to lead the charge into Shinoyama's territory. So that's the turn. And I will see you in the next one.